Hi, you guys. This is Heidi St. John. Welcome to the Off the Bench podcast. Today, I'm going to tackle a topic that is being talked about all over the news, but not addressed properly in the church, and that is the topic of Christian nationalism. I want you to stick around because this is going to be a conversation that we're going to need to have in the weeks and months with our kids. Well, I'm glad you guys are here today. So this is the first week of the Mom Strong International Bible Study. We're studying identity. And as you guys can see, I'm trying to get to it right here. As you can see, uh, this has been, this is what it looks like. So Imago Day created, known, and loved. We're going to spend the month of October talking about why we need to stop talking about how the world sees us as individuals and need to start talking again about how God sees us. Because really, that's the only thing that matters, right? What are we here for? The Bible teaches us that we are here to bring honor and glory to God. We are here to glorify God. And in a world that is literally obsessed with sexual identity, this has become the uh, the march of the left right now that we see ourselves uh, clearly through a lens of sexuality. But more than that, it's a departure from what God says, even about human sexuality and about marriage. And uh, we're going to spend the month of October diving into the word of God and parsing it out and then taking a look at ourselves through the lens of scripture. And so I hope you guys will join me. I'm really excited to be teaching again at MomStrong International. And again, you can join me there at MomStrongInternational.com. Also, as I've said to you before, my speaking season is starting to fill up and uh, I'm very excited about that. If you guys would like to have me come and speak for your event, you can do that by contacting me at HeidiStJohn.com and just clicking on the speaker tab. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube, I'm very glad that you are here. We are uh, slowly but steadily moving our way up. All right, I got a question from a listener a couple of weeks ago, and she was asking me about Christian nationalism and in fact, accusing me, and it's a sort of accusatory language of the left of being a Christian nationalist. And at first I was like, you know, I'm offended. I'm like, I'm not a Christian nationalist. (laughs) You guys, I actually think I am one. And here's here's why I think this is not a bad thing. The more I got to thinking about it, I was like, wait a minute. So if if the the language, remember I've said this, you know, a million times here at the show, change the language, you change the culture. So we're we're watching the left just destroy or try to destroy uh, Western civilization, absolutely for sure, by just changing the language, right? So we change the language of male and female. We decide that pronouns are something that is now a uh, fluid so we can refer to to somebody in the in a with a plural pronoun just because they d- identify as non-binary or some other such nonsense this is patently false by the way and they've taken words so if you if you for example believe that Donald Trump was a good president which I do by and large uh, I thought he was a, a very good president I loved his policy by and large uh, certainly, I didn't agree with everything he did, and I don't agree with everything he says. Uh, there are lots of issues with Donald Trump that I would that I would take issue with. But when you're talking about his policy positions as a president, by and large, I agreed with them and supported them. And I've talked about this on the show before, and that immediately to to many people on the left made me a fascist. It, if if I say that I uh, that I don't believe that transgenderism is actual science, I think it's a political ideology that's coming out in what I call cultural Marxism, and we're injuring our children, body, soul, mind, and spirit, uh, then you'd have certain members of the left call me a bigot. Well, I I think we need to start looking at the definitions of these words because just because the modern left and our woke universities and our woke churches like to throw the words around like bigot and fascist and Christian nationalist, it doesn't mean, I, I kind of want to sit some of these guys down and say, me thinks It does not mean what you think it means. Or maybe they're just changing the definition because they're trying to cause culture uh, to be the culture to be in chaos. And really, that's where we're headed. We're headed toward a cultural chaos. And so I want to talk about Christian nationalism because I know that a lot of you, you know, you kind of shrink back from from the idea that you could be termed a nationalist. So let's think about this for a moment and see, is it really a bad thing? By the way, God has a heart for nations. God's a fan of walls. (laughs) So the church has this inherently misguided understanding, largely because we've stopped reading scripture and we're just listening to, you know, woke preachers and 
woke reporters and woke uh, cultural commentators on TikTok were not studying to understand what these words actually mean. What's the root of the word? Where does the word come from? And so I actually looked it up on Wikipedia so no one could say, well, you found that at Christian.com or whatever, right? So here's what Wikipedia says. Nationalism is an idea and a movement that holds that a nation should be congruent with the state. Hmm. As a movement, this is important, as a movement, nationalism tends to promote the interests of a particular nation, especially with the aim of gaining and maintaining the nation's sovereignty, in other words, self-governance, over its homeland to create a nation-state. Nationalism holds that each nation should govern itself, free from outside interference, which is self-determination, and uh, that a nation is a natural and ideal basis for a polity and that the nation is the only rightful source of political power. So the nation has a right to self-governance, to determine our own future, determine what our own identity is going to be, and that we as a nation are the only rightful source of political power over our nation. Well, so far, I mean, you guys, this is Wikipedia. And so far I'm like, yeah, you're right. That's a good thing. Anybody with anyone who loves the country that they live in should be a nationalist because we should want what is good for our country and good for our citizens. We don't want to be in a position where we could be invaded or where our, our, our nation is soft and we can't defend ourselves and we can no longer govern ourselves. Listen, we left England to be free. And here we are in the United States, one of the most freest nations on the face of the earth. And all of a sudden Christians are like, oh, no, 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 I'm not a nationalist. Uh, then you should move and go find a country that you love and there be a nationalist. Because if you love the country, you should be, I think you should be a nationalist. Here's Wikipedia goes on to say, it further aims to build and maintain a single national identity based on a combination of shared characteristics such as culture, ethnicity, graphic, geographic location, language, politics, religion, traditions, and belief in a shared singular history and to promote national unity or national solidarity. Again, I see nothing wrong with this, right? As an American, as a citizen of the United States, I know a lot of you listening are my friends across the pond, and I know that you have an incredible sense of national identity. And we saw this come out with the death of Queen Elizabeth, right? Where hundreds of thousands of people lined the streets to mourn the death of a monarch who had really shaped a nation and given you a sense of national identity. That makes you, wait for it, a nationalist. And for some reason, that's a bad thing. Let's continue. Uh, nationalism, therefore, seeks to preserve and foster a nation's traditional culture. Have you noticed that the left is hell-bent on destroying our history, destroying our culture? They want to destroy everything that is traditional about this, fam about this nation, including the traditional family, including the roles of male and female. And it is it is so wrong for us to sit back and just go, yeah, that's okay. You know, sure. You know, if I want to self-identify as a baboon tomorrow, I guess that's okay. And the school is going to have to make for me, you know, a bed out of straw or whatever baboons like when I come to school, because after all, I see myself as a baboon. That is exactly the same thing as saying that Heidi St. John self-identifies as a man. I'm clearly not a man. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I think that would be obvious, right? So I'm a woman. And to identify as a man is patently false. It's a lie. And the left wants you to embrace a lie because they are committed. And remember, Black Lives Matter said this on their website before they were called out and took it down. They were committed to dismantling the nuclear family. In other words, whatever is traditional about the family. Uh, Wikipedia went on to say there are various definitions of, quote, a nation, which leads to different types of nationalism. All right. So now let's think about this. So now we've got nationalism, which I'm like, yep, that's me. That's I know I'm the girl that cries at the Star Spangled Banner. I love this country. I love studying the history of this country, flaws and all. Have we done bad things as a nation? Absolutely. But if you don't talk about the bad things that have happened as a nation or the bad leaders, for example, we have a terrible leader in the White House right now. And we're going to be talking about it for generations. This guy who is systematically destroying the economic and social fabric of the United States. We have a terrible leader. In our, in our country right now. We went through a terrible season, uh, years even, in this nation when we embraced slavery. And we rectified that. And now we are one of the most prosperous nations on the face of the earth because we do not allow slavery, because we learn from our mistakes 
and we corrected it. But to go around the country and dismantle statues and try to erase our history is foolish because those who don't remember their history are destined to repeat it. So now we've talked about nationalism, which is basically, hey, you love your country, you want to preserve its history, you want to preserve uh, you want to preserve your own sovereignty so that no other nation could come and rule over you. These are not bad things. So what does it mean to be a Christian? Well, a Christian is someone who believes in and loves and identifies with the Lord Jesus Christ. We identify with him in his life and we identify with him in his death. We have accepted him as our Lord and Savior. We look to the Bible as our moral compass. And most of the issues that we're facing in the nation right now are moral at their root. And so to divorce morality from government is a, is a recipe for disaster. How's that working for us? You know, we see all these people uh, on, on uh, the, the polar opposite side of the political spectrum talking about how we should divorce uh, the, the church and the state. Well, the whole separation of church and state was so that there would never be again another state-sponsored church. This is what we came from in England. And we don't have that here. And we have, um, we, and, and, uh, and there's not a Christian that I know, and certainly not a Christian in their right mind, who would ever want to impose Christianity on another person. We have, we're free to choose. And so a Christian is someone who identifies with Jesus Christ, who has accepted him as their Lord and Savior, someone who has become born again through receiving Jesus Christ into their heart and into their life, as I have done. And so, therefore, as a Christian, I see the world through the moral lens of the Bible. And as I talked to you guys about the other day, uh, yesterday, was that the moral lens, I believe I have a creator and having a creator changes everything. It changes who I am. It changes how I see the world. And as a general rule, it's a filter by which I, I view everything around me from education to government. So let's look to see what does Wikipedia say then? So now I take my Christianity and I look at my country through the filter of Christianity and I love my country. And so that somehow makes me a Christian nationalist. So let's look at this. Christian nationalism, according to Wikipedia, is a Christianity affiliated religious nationalism. In other words, if you're a Christian and you love your country, I hate to tell you this, but you are a Christian nationalist. I don't actually think that that's a bad thing. Christian national, this is Wikipedia again. Christian nationalists primarily focus on internal politics, such as passing laws that reflect their view of Christianity and its role in political and social life in, and countries in which, uh, in countries with the state church, Christian nationalists in seeking to preserve the status of Christian state uphold anti-disestablishmentarian, whatever the heck that is, position. Actually, I don't understand Wikipedia. What That's way too big of a word. That's a, that's like, two prefixes and a suffix in there. I see establishment and they're like anti-disestablishmentarian position. Okay. So what I'm looking at according to Wikipedia is Wikipedia is like Christian nationalists. They want to impose their will. You, Wikipedia, hey, you kind of got it right and you kind of got it wrong. We don't want to impose our will. We see the world through the lens of a moral compass, which is laid out for us in scripture. And again, these are not, this is not a wrong view. It's wrong when you try to impose your view or when you try to expand beyond. I mean, we have, as Christians, we have a a beautiful opportunity in this country to participate in our system of government. That is what has made the United States so blessed and so prosperous. We have an opportunity, every single one of us, whether we're Christian or whether we're secular, whether we're Buddhist, and, and whether, even whether we're Marxist, unfortunately, we get to participate in our system of government. That's what's made this country special. And when Christians retreat from that, we wind up where we are right now. I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back. So let's talk about, so now we've talked about nationalism. We've talked about Christian nationalism. What's the opposite of nationalism? It would be imperialism, right? So imperialism, meaning when now you you don't just care about your country making your country safe and making sure that you're not being ruled by other nations. An imperialist wants to expand beyond his own borders now and take over other other neighboring countries. And we're seeing this right now absolutely happen with uh, Vladimir Putin trying to now annex parts of Ukraine. These do not belong to him. He has invaded this country. He wants that country for himself. Again, I'm going to go back to Wikipedia because I don't want you guys going, well, Heidi just looks at, uh, you know, Christian.com. And that's where she gets everything. This is what Wikipedia says. Imperialism is a policy or ideology of extending a nation's rule over 
foreign nations. Imperialism is the state policy practice or advocacy of extending power and dominion, especially by direct territorial acquisition, which is exactly what you're watching uh, Putin attempting to do right now, or by gaining political and economic control of other areas, often through employing hard, but also soft power. So soft power, hard power is obviously, this is a military invasion. Soft power is uh, eventually and slowly taking control of the education systems that are in a country. This is why I am so alarmed at what is happening in our education system. This is an infiltration, which is frankly coming from uh, Karl Marx. Um, The Marxists have talked about infiltrating our country for years and years with a slow, what they called a slow invasion through our schools. And they've been very successful in that. While related to concepts of imperialism uh, and colonialism, imperialism is a distinct concept that can apply to other forms of expansion and many other forms of government. Uh, According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Imperialism can be defined as an act of, quote, extending power and dominion, especially by direct territorial acquisition or by gaining political and economic control of other areas. This is not nationalism. All right. So this it's it's a completely it's a completely different idea. As a nationalist, I'm concerned about my own country and the welfare of the people here and making sure that we can defend ourselves and that we have the right to govern ourselves. In other words, we're a sovereign nation. When you see what the left is doing at the southern border right now, if you don't have a border, you don't have a nation. We absolutely need to have, uh, we need to have secure borders. By the eve of World War II, and again, I'm back back to the Encyclopedia Britannica, two participants of World War I, Germany and Japan, were slowly gaining power as imperialist countries. So these guys had, uh, you guys remember Pearl Harbor with Japan and of course, uh, Hitler with his desire to just rule over all of Europe, right? These countries were even were eager for even greater control and eventually launched a war that resulted in many lost lives and caused waves of chaos throughout the world. Both Germany and Japan were eager to create, quote, a space for their race. Now you've got racism involved in this too, right? So that they could establish vast empires in Europe and Asia, uh, in, in Europe and Asia. In Germany, Hitler and his National Socialist Party rose to power. Again, I want you guys to listen. Hitler had a National Socialist Party. Socialism is a bad idea. It's always been a bad idea. Uh, and so their main idea was Nazism, and it became the basis of German imperialism, meaning we are going to expand outside of our borders. It was Hitler's desire to expand his country and establish an extensive empire for for his race. Additionally, they saw the Jews as inferior and implemented the final solution, which then resulted in the mass murder of Jews all across Europe. Likewise, Japan's ambition was to create a, quote, greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere by dominating its neighboring countries. Wow. So they adopted the concept of social Darwinism, believing that they were the strongest and most favored race in Asia. Between 1933 and 1945, Nazi Germany engaged in extremely aggressive forms of ideological-based conquest throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Based on the imperial doctrine established in Mein Kampf, which was the book that Hitler wrote, this ideological imperialism sought to ensure that the German nation-state had the resources needed to guarantee a, quote, freedom of existence. So he's not a nationalist. This guy was an imperialist, right? As a result, ideological imperialism became a potent mix of nationalism. I mean, I would say this was nationalism gone wrong, nationalism off the rails, right? A desire for empire and a rigid form of biological racism. And of course, you know that the war led to a massive death toll caused not only by the battles that occurred worldwide, but but by the brutalities committed by the imperialist powers. And so uh, if we look at this very closely, we know that this uh, this is not about law. It's not about power. This is about morality right? Moral ethics and human rights severely violated. And Germany and Japan violated women's rights. They killed millions of civilians. And so when someone says to me, you know, Heidi, you're a, a Christian nationalist as if that were a bad thing. I'm like, yeah, you right. I, I love the Lord. God cares about people. I happen to have been born in Portland, Oregon, in the United States of America. I care about this country. And I believe that the principles laid out in the Bible, i.e. the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery, those kinds of things are actually not bad things. But as you're seeing the, the continued 
move of the left, and the left is evil. When you guys hear leftists talking, open your ears and listen to what they're saying. This is moral anarchy. It's moral chaos. This is a different kind of imperialism because it seeks to strip us of our national identity and of any tradition that we had that we built this country on, and it's wrong. And so I, I refuse any more to listen to people who say that Christian nationalism is a bad idea. Call me a fascist, call me a bigot. But when I look at the definition of nationalism, I say, yeah, that's me. I love this country. If that makes me a nationalist, then so be it, right? And when you and when you apply the term Christian to whatever it is, I mean, you guys, somebody called me uh, a racist the other day. That's okay, you guys. You want to give me, you know what? Uh, it, it's not going to stick to me because it's not who I am. And so when we allow the left to define us, whether it's with these ridiculous, uh, you know, pronouns or uh, a misunderstanding or not even a misunderstanding. They totally get it. They don't misunderstand anything. This is wicked and they're confusing our children. And we have got to start speaking the truth in every sphere of influence. And that includes the political sphere. We are called to every sphere of influence. And I hope that as you are listening to this show and as you, you're you watching other people around you who are putting their lives on the line, to stand for truth and righteousness, They're, they will be persecuted, right? Because the left, I've told you guys this before, socialists don't sleep. The left isn't sleeping. They're going to continue their slow march. It's actually not even slow anymore. Their massive march through our universities and through our schools of education in this country. And the only way to stop it is to stand up against it and speak the truth boldly. The only answer to a bold lie is bold truth. I hope this has encouraged you guys today, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'm going to come back next week, and I'll be here for Mailbox Monday. And then I'm going to welcome my friend, Barbara Cameron, to the podcast with me on Tuesday. Barbara, as you know, is the mother of Kurt Cameron and Candace Bure Cameron. She's raised some extraordinary kids, and we're going to talk to her about motherhood. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Love your people well. And I'll see you back here on Monday at the intersection of faith and culture.